Welcome back. You're watching The Farm. This week, the government stepped up its disinvestment drive with Hindustan Copper. And NTPC, Oil India and NMDC are most likely next. Now, this the government is expected to do via the well-accepted OFS or offer for sale route. But will that be enough to reach the 30,000 crore rupee target? Well, another route under serious consideration is the creation of a PSU, Public Sector Unit, ETF or Exchange Traded Fund, PSU ETF. Now, ETFs have proved to be popular instruments in the recent past. But a previous similar attempt by the government 20 years ago had failed. So, Sajit Mangat and Pais Vinayupadhyay find out what the government should do to get it right the second time round. For Prime Minister Manmohan Singh and his men, time is running out. Investor interest in the country has been dampened by a slowing economy. And with a widening fiscal deficit, the government urgently needs to get its divestment drive in gear. One of the means that the Department of Disinvestment wants to use is a novel exchange traded fund or ETF route. Experts say this ETF idea may work better than the bundling strategy the government employed between 1991 and 95 when it raised over 9,000 crore rupees by divesting stake in 30 companies. The problem then was that the government created mixed bundles of central public sector enterprises to ensure that both the attractive and the not so attractive stocks saw some demand. And when these bundles were sold to GIC, LIC and UTI, these financial institutions could not discover the fair value of each PSU stock. The problem did not end there. UTI, for instance, which picked up 65% of this issue, then distributed the shares to its various schemes including UTI Master Growth and US 64. And in 1992, when the markets crashed, UTI had to be bailed out by the government. When you look at basically a you know, structure which is typically a, a mutual fund structure, even if you look at the uh, divestment as, as we enumerated in the early 90s, uh, it is not linked to the underlying prices. It is basically you know, a, a divestment possibly done, uh, I am not completely aware of it, but possibly uh, done uh, straight uh, without the private discovery into the uh, financial institution. Now what an ETF does is, ETF is always linked to the uh, underlying stocks which are always listed on the market. So what you have is a pricing which is very, very transparent, very, very obvious and very, very available to the people. So when people are buying into the ETF, they know exactly what they are buying and they can easily convert say into the underlying uh, uh, components of that. And so people are aware of what's really going on with the ETF. So I think you know, there are completely different models in that sense. Experts say that the Indian government may want to take a peek at the Hong Kong government's playbook which has executed this PSU ETF idea successfully. After the Asian meltdown in 1997, the Hong Kong government acquired substantial stakes in listed companies to support the markets, created a Hong Kong tracker fund to hold these stakes and then divested its holdings in November 1999 through a $4.3 billion IPO of the tracker fund. If you look, look at it at the structure, on the left hand side was the government which was the holder of, uh, of these securities. Uh, and it was looking for a vehicle in which it could divest into. It could obviously proceed to do it by way of selling it into the market, but if it took that approach, it would have a direct influence on the performance of the, of the securities on the, on the, on the public uh, securities markets. So what it did was it then invested into an exchange traded fund, which is your Hong Kong unit trust. The AMC, which I think you refer to the asset management company, had to first set up the fund and they had to s constitute a, a Hong Kong established unit trust. Once the Hong Kong established unit trust was set up, it could then purchase and acquire the securities directly from the government. Once that acquisition was made and therefore the assets moved from the government into the Hong Kong unit trust, the Hong Kong unit trust um, by way of the AMC registering and listing the unit trust would then effectively be IPO'd on the exchange. Back home, the government has taken the first step by appointing ICICI Securities as an advisor to structure its central public sector ETF. Experts say structuring this PSU ETF will entail the creation of an index and then the ETF basket itself which will track this index. Our belief is that you know you will you will uh, have an index which is being created. 
uh, similar to you know what you have the Nifty or the Junior Nifty or the Bombay Sensex. Uh, 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 ETF will be created, uh, index will be created based on the kind of you know some amount of theme or some structure, wherein the government will basically put in the stocks which uh, they want to divest, and and uh, people will be able to understand the structure of and and the theme behind that index. And in terms of the asset manager, there will be the total how the ETF will work is very conventional ETF, how it works now. The structure uh, will be basically two folds. One, you would have uh, the sale from the PSU to the AMC and then um, the AMC would have the portfolio of companies on which the uh, ETF would be based and then you have the sale of the ETF from um, the, the the brokers uh, through the brokers on the exchange uh, from the AMC. So there, there are two legs to the the transaction. Um, on the second leg, there is an existing uh, structure available uh, through SEBI regulations and the uh, exchange regulations, which provide how ETFs will trade. Um, you know who can trade in them, the margin requirements. Um, all of that currently exists. We just have to tweak it for the PSU ETFs. Uh, I think the challenge will more be on the first leg. And that first leg would be the sale of PSU shares from the government to the AMC. If you're looking at a listed stock and if the AMC is buying the listed, listed stock from the PSU, uh, it'll have to do it on the exchange. And if you do it in the block window, you have the plus minus one restriction. Um, if you do it uh, through a bulk purchase on the exchange, um, you know, you, you can do it through what we call the one, two, three trades. But uh, currently the law there is gray. If you, you know, trade at a significant premium or a significant discount, you're open to questions on market manipulation. So a uh, structure will have to either be created, like they could create a block window without the one, uh, plus minus one restriction for trading in the PSU stocks, or they could look at something like the OFS route um, without the, the limit on how much uh, you can sell to one investor. The current restriction is only 25% of the offering can go to one investor. The second challenge will be selling this ETF to investors because going by current trends, retail investors account for nearly 50% subscription of a ETF and to appeal to a retail investor, pricing will become the critical factor. You would need to figure out a mechanism by which these ETFs can be provided to the ultimate uh, investor at a discount, whether that's through tax incentives for the ETF provider or uh, providing a mechanism for by which the ETF uh, provider themselves can take these uh, stocks at a discount from the government. On incentives, again, Hong Kong may provide a workable solution. One of the big incentives that the government had provided was uh, what we refer to as the loyalty bonus. So for example, um, this was I think targeted at the retail tranche, the retail investors. If a retail investor bought the Hong Kong tracker in, in 1999 and they held it for a period of say 12 months, the government would actually issue uh, bonus units, which are basically the interest that you hold in the tracker fund, at the end of the 12-month period. So you could see it as a way of a dividend payment or a, a bonus share issuance. That was one of the incentives that were put forward to the retail investors to encourage them not to trade the tracker fund, but to take a longer-term buy and hold strategy. Distribution will be the third big challenge. By one estimate, the top 15 cities contribute 87% to the mutual fund industry. But to make PSU divestment via ETF route a success, the government will have to go beyond these. Also, given that the expense ratio for an ETF is lower than a regular mutual fund, the AMC will have little incentive for its distributor to market the PSU ETF. Over the next few months, ICICI Securities will advise the government on the modalities of creating an index for the PSU stocks and the ETF basket itself. The Finance Ministry will also select an AMC to manage this ETF. Now besides the structure, pricing and distribution, timing will be crucial too. Experts suggest that the government should aim to launch this ETF in January-February next year when most investors plan their taxes. And that will work only if the ETF comes bundled with tax incentives. 
in Mumbai with Sajit Mangat, Pais Vinay Upadhyay. With that, it's a wrap on this week's show. Do remember to send us your feedback on email, Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, however you please. We'll see you next week.